what I have next here is uh, another variable uh, 57, so right here. It's CMS or custom menu system. L and R stands for left and right and input number. Okay, so I have four icons and um, <laughs> if I go back, what I'm basically doing here by setting it to zero is ensuring that status always appears on top. Okay, if I did not do that, so if I get rid of this and I go back, this is what would happen. Yes, it would appear, but when I play, play around and move about this menu, if I were to press X, see, quit is on top right now, and uh, if I were to press X again, you would see it kind of does this weird motion thing where it has to uh, adjust so quit appears on top again. Um, so if the quip was on top and I went back, it would have to adjust itself. Now if I add that line back in after the sound effect, I have it set to zero, okay? No matter where I am in this menu, when I go back to it, status will always appear. So it's a way of making it a bit smoother, okay? Um, right now, it doesn't mean anything because it actually has to do with um, the display right here. Okay, so this is actually uh, how you move about uh, these two entries, 14 and 15. I <coughs> basically govern how you move about the menu. This is all about how you enter and exit the menu, okay? So this line here will make more sense when we go over 14 and 15. All right, um, after setting this to zero, I have a show picture which shows uh, the back of this uh, information uh, piece. Um, I basically have that set to show, I have the transparency set to 100, and then I have a move picture, move picture 28, and I'm basically moving that in the span of 0.3 or 3 tenths of a second to the transparency of 10 and 10, so more visible. Next, uh, I'm displaying the status icon here with the variable references, so this uh, X is going to be icon stat X, the Y is going to be icon stat Y, the transparency is going to be invisible, so set to 100, and the magnification is going to be 105, because I want whatever icon appears in this slot to be a bit bigger than in these three slots. So mag magnification 105, um, show picture 31, it's going to be the uh, equip icon. So icon equip X, icon equip Y, magnification is going to be 100, transparency once again is going to be invisible for now, okay? Same thing with the, sorry about that, same thing with the quit icon, um, or exit icon, and same thing with the items icon. They're set to their respective, respective variables with a transparency of 100 and for this one, uh, mag magnification of 100 as well, okay? So, after I show these pictures um, as being completely invisible, I'm going to move them so they become visible. So, once again, it's set to variable reference uh, stat x and stat y for picture 30, which, if you remember, is our icon status. Now, in 0.3 seconds or 3 tenths of a second, we're moving it to a transparency of 5 and 5, which is very visible. Okay? And we're doing the same thing for pictures 31 through 33 with their respective variable references. After that, I have a wait um, just to add some time uh, to allow you know everything to be placed properly. And finally, a switch operation which says that custom menu system is on. When I turn this switch on, then these entries activate. So you can see here, trigger switch, CMS on, um, all of these will only occur when custom menu system, this uh, switch 22 is on. Same thing goes for this, same thing goes for this, same thing goes for this, 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 and this, okay? Um, when CMS is on, then 
this entry, uh, entry 10, is pretty much done for the time being. Um, the only thing, the only time it will um, come into use again is when I press the cancel key. When I press the cancel key once more, it will check if you know the status menu is on. Because it's not on, it will check if the custom menu system is on. Is uh, custom menu system on is off? Excuse me, I know it's a bit confusing. Um, it'll check to see if the switch is off. Because it is set to on, it will go to the else handler, which is this line right here, and everything that follows. Okay. So because the menu has displayed at this point, when we press the cancel key, um, it will pretty much uh, instantiate all of these uh, lines here. So what will happen next is we're going to switch CMS on to off, okay? Then we're going to, you know, again, audio uh, feedback, have that sound effect play. Then we're going to erase pictures 30, 31, 32, 33, and those are our icon pictures. We're also going to erase picture 29 and 28, which is going to be our description or scrolling text pictures. Uh, we're also going to erase picture 36, which is the uh, status menu. So this is just to doubly uh, ensure that it gets erased when we exit the menu, okay? Finally, we have a move event hero. The reason we have this is because when this switch 22 turns on, there's another entry, uh, entry 25, uh, that I have set to the name of hero wait, where I go to, where I went to event commands, page two, move event, and I moved uh, the sprite hero to a wait with a repeat pattern. If I did not have this, um, the hero would basically be moving around even though the menu has appeared. Uh, so if I show you guys, you can see that while I'm walking around, um, the menu is moving and it's just really confusing and doesn't really work for our purposes. So you want that wait command in a entry once uh, the main bulk of your menu system has been uh, turned on. In this case, switch number 22, okay? If I go back to uh, this uh, entry right here, you can see that I have a move event hero and there's nothing listed there um, and that's just to allow the hero to be able to move again. If I did not have this, uh, the hero would be stuck in place even if the menu was uh, had vanished. Okay, And then you want to proceed with move and just ensure that this move event, uh, this blank move event takes place. Okay, So it's a bit confusing but if we didn't have this line, the hero would basically be stuck and unable to move until you shut the game off. So you make sure you have that. Um, once again, this entry is just to turn uh, the menu on and off to basically make it appear and disappear. The following uh, entries from 14 to 25 occur when the menu has actually appeared. Okay. So right now we have entry 14, we'll go over that, uh, CMS key input. Okay, so this, once again we're using um, variable 41, uh, you want to have that as your first line and that will provide for this conditional branch. Um, basically what you're doing is you're checking to see if variable 41 is equal to either 2 or if it's equal to 3. If it's equal to 2, the hero has, or the, excuse me, the player has pressed the left key. If it's equal to 3, the player has pressed the right key. So you want to think logically, what happens when the play, player presses the left key? Well, the first thing you want to do is audio feedback. You want to have that sound effect play. Alright, for this part, um, I think it's better to show rather than just talk about it. Um, so what I want you guys to pay attention to is variable 57. Basically, if it's if the player is pressing left and it's set to zero, then uh, it will be set to three. 
if it's not set to zero, then it will be set to minus one. Uh, if the player is pressing right and it's set to three, then it will be set to zero. Otherwise, it would be set to plus one. Uh, this uh, snippet right here is actually not displaying any of the graphics. It's just setting up the positions for the icons. Uh, entry 15, on the other hand, sets up the graphics itself. So if it's set to zero, that variable, then uh, the following occur, move picture. So 30, we're going to move picture um, 30 to the position of the status icon. 31, we're going to move to the position of the equip. 32 to exit and uh, 33 to item. Now if we look at uh, if the variable is set to 1, then picture 30, we would change that to the position of the equip and not the status. Uh, 31 would be exit, 32 would be items, and 33 would be status. Okay, so we're just kind of moving down the line. Uh, if the variable is set to 2, then 30 would be exit, 31 would be items, 32 would be status, and 33 would be the equip icon. And finally, if it's set to 3, then 30 would be the item icon, 31 would be the status icon, 32 would be the equip icon, and 33 would be the exit icon. Okay? So that's what you want to basically do to have it uh, so when the player presses right or left, um, these move events are going to rotate those pictures into their proper slots. Um, and that's basically the bulk of it. Right here, from entry 17 to entry 20, we basically have the uh, these information pictures uh, being scrolled. So if the variable 57 is set to zero, that means status is being scrolled. So I have picture 29, status, uh, starting position is 300, and then we have a move event. We are moving it to negative 220. So it's just moving from right to left. Uh, same thing with the items picture. So if it's one, then it would be you would have to show the items. Okay. Uh, same picture number 29. Uh, same x position, and we're moving it to the same y or same x position, uh, negative 220. Uh, if the input is set to two, then it would be the exit uh, information. And if it's set to three, then it would be the equipment information. <coughs> and for entry 22, this is <coughs> basically uh, if the player were to press the enter key or the Z key on, uh, we only have the status icon uh, at this point. Uh, <coughs> what you basically do is have a conditional branch. If it's set to zero, this variable, which means that status is being displayed on top, then you're checking to see if the key input is set to 5, which means that the player has pressed enter. And if that player has pressed enter, then uh, it checks to see if this status menu is on or not. Because it's not on right now, the else handler uh, event lines occur. So the sound effect plays. And then this picture is shown at a very high transparency, so it's invisible. And then we move the picture to a low transparency, making it visible, giving it that sort of transition from uh, transparent to visible. It kind of gives it that animation. Um, and then we have this switch operation, we're turning it on. <coughs> okay, so now that it's turned on, if I press enter on my keyboard again, nothing's going to happen because under uh, this condition, status menu on is on, we leave it blank. So if I press enter again, nothing happens, okay? Uh, if the variable is set to 57, uh, the variable 57 is set to 1, that means uh, equip, I believe, or items, excuse me, I uh, got that mixed up. If it's set to 1 and items is um, on top and the player presses uh, enter, then uh, nothing happens. Basically, this cancel sound effect plays, indicating that that option is not uh, available uh, for the input being set to 2 and the player pressing enter. 
different sound effect choice is played and then I have this event uh, line return to title screen which can be found on the third page at the very bottom and if it's set to three same thing uh, cancel because we don't have anything for equip or item right now um, it, they would basically work the same way as the status uh, you would check to see if you know this variable is set to their respective numbers so for status it's zero then you would have this uh, variable 41 you would check to see if enter is being pressed and yeah then you would check to see if that switch uh, has been uh, called upon if not you leave it blank if or if it has you leave it blank if not then you would bring about the pictures and play with it like that so it would work the same way as this uh, the coding for the status uh, icon <laughs> and of course we already went over the hero weight so yeah that in a nutshell is all the coding that you need um, to create this radio menu system so one more time let me show you guys the finished product Right now it says view your, your equipment, but it changes um, appropriately. It just needs a few seconds. But uh, yeah, that's basically what it looks like. Um, yeah, so I hope um, that it made sense to you guys as you were following along. If it did not, uh, I do you know, apologize, it, it is a bit hard to explain all of this. Um, I'm usually just used to entering in this, uh, playing around, tweaking it, and then, you know, getting it to how I want it exactly. Um, if it didn't make, uh, you know, perfect sense to you guys, then I would recommend working with it on your own engine, like on your own game it, within this engine, uh, playing the video tutorial, and just pausing when you see these snippets of code and entering in uh, these event lines into your own game and kind of playing around with it like that I think it would kind of reinforce what you've been watching and uh, yeah it'd be a really effective way to learn so <laughs> that is uh, going to be it for this week uh, this video tutorial on custom menu systems. I want to thank you guys uh, for watching this video tutorial. Uh, it will probably be split up into two parts. So for those of you who have stuck it out all the way through, you know, much appreciation. And hopefully next week we will cover some custom menu systems on uh, uh, well, similar to the one you saw in the beginning of the part one video uh, with Eden Gate. So stick around for that. If this interests you, uh, you know, please consider liking and commenting and, uh, you know, subscribing to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, I do appreciate the support thus far. Uh, and the feedback that I'm getting is really nice, you know, just uh, encouragement and people telling me that you know these video tutorials are helping them uh, really makes all of this uh, hard work uh, rewarding for me and enjoyable <laughs> though it can be frustrating at times uh, let me tell you so I will see you guys next time and uh, look forward to our uh, next video tutorial take care